Jack Doherty, it's great to see you. Well, hello, good to see you, Gordon. How are you? I'm very well, Jack. I got a row the other day from an yes. interviewee who said, yes. never ask somebody how they are. You should ask, what's disturbing your peace? No, no, nothing's disturbing my peace. You know, obviously anxious and worried about, you know, getting a show together. Yeah. I'm in that process of going, why do I do this for a living? What, 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 what was I thinking of? And then suddenly you start and you love it, so it's all fine. It's a right. slightly different thing, though, because you've done this show. Yes. Right? Um, David Bowie and me, Parallel Lives. Yes. Uh, I spoke to you about it at the time when you were doing it yes. at the Edinburgh Festival, but does yeah. that stuff fall out of your head or is it muscle memory when you come back? It's to quite it? A lot of it's muscle memory, but a lot also falls out. You think you're going to just get it straight back, but actually six months, you begin to lose a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And I've done a television series in between, so I had to do recording four half hours, so all those words. <laughs> so you push all those words out, fall out of this year, the new ones come in, and then you open up this <laughs> plug and they fall out and you shove all those ones back in and then suddenly. Do you feel ready for it? Are you prepared? Yes, I'm maybe not quite match fit. Some of the show is about the time that I met Boy. You know, it's about my love of Boy as a teenager and all of that, and then finally meeting him. And part of the show is about me deciding to lose enough weight to get into the suit that I was wearing when I interviewed David Boy. So I have the suit with me and I try. I'm sad to report, God, <laughs> that it may not have gone quite according to plan. <laughs> and I make it. Yeah. So we'll see if I can just get into it. For anybody who's not seen the show though, it's not all about David Bowie, is it? It's kind of a coming of age story yeah. as well. David Bowie is just a jumping off point for me to get into things like first love and, and stories about my parents and how, you know, how your parents hate what you love. So it's a jumping off point just to do some stand up really about memories of my teenage years and then growing up and also about being a fan. So if you've been a fan of anybody, then you'll, you'll get this show. What was it like to be such a big fan in the 70s and then to have the opportunity? I think it was 97 when you got to interview him. 97 when I got to interview him. years ago. Yeah, it was incredibly exciting. I always talk about my days as a chat show host and I met some incredibly famous mm. people, but I didn't have that kind of absolute thrill. Whereas with Bowie, yeah. you try and tamp it down. But anybody that you've loved when you were a teenager, that love never dies mm -hmm. and it's there forever. So I tried to be casual. But I look back at the interview and I can see me just going, oh my God, <laughs> it's David Bowie. How long was the lead up to the interview when you knew he was going to be sitting in front of you for an interview? I fell asleep in my, um, in my dressing room and I remember coming out and opening the door and he was just standing there. <laughs> just for some reason he happened to be yeah. outside. And I said, oh my God, David, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Jack and I'll be interviewing you. And he just went, I know who you are, Jack. I'm a big fan. <laughs> and yes. of course he's not. <laughs> yeah. But how nice of him to say yeah. so. And I was looking around, was anybody, was nobody filming that? You know, why don't we have that? I understand that there may be more Edinburgh Festival action with a new show this Yes, year. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do The Chief uh, yes. again live um, in a show called No Apologies. <laughs> um, where on earth yeah. did I get that idea? Yeah. I haven't done The Chief since, I think, 2018. Really? So Is I did the, yeah, yeah, live. Yeah. I've obviously done The Chief in Scott Squad yeah. many times. But I went off and I thought, well, I'll do plays and stand yeah. up and just do different things and I'll do The Chief on television. But it feels right now to do The Chief again. Because you notice that uh, even from 2018 to now, a lot of people now know that character. Mm -hmm. Kind of where, particularly with things like the Apology Sketch or digging up the time capsule. Yeah. These yeah. things that go viral, which you didn't have when I was young. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy thing. So suddenly the Seattle Police Force will direct message me and go, we want you to be our chief of police. <laughs> yeah. And you're going, seriously. Just crazy. Seriously, yeah. yeah. And the chief, you've just touched on it. Yes. There's a spin-off, so he's there going is. to be on telly in his own right. Yeah, there's a spin-off um, from uh, Scott Squad called The Chief, which follows uh, his adventures with his senior management team. Mm -hmm. And you also get to meet his daughter. No spoilers, but she's a bit of a climate activist. So it's getting more into his personal life. Yeah. And when you look back at Absolutely and your time working then, yeah. are you proud of how well yeah. that comedy's standing up? No, I really am, because it started in 1990. Yeah. And people still come up to me in bars and quote whole mm. chunks of sketches. And I think it's because Absolutely wasn't topical. It was kind of surreal and strange, so it stands the test of time, you know? What to be proud of, Jack? It's, yeah, a, it's a great, exactly. you've, you've had a fascinating career. No, it's been fun. It's you're been still enjoying it as much as you did. Completely, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I like the fact that I've done, you know, not stuck to one thing. I like mm -hmm. jumping around from thing to thing mm -hmm. and, you know, it just keeps it interesting. So may I ask you then, just to finish with yes. the Chief's view of the year ahead, um, if he was given his State of the Nation speech? Well, he would just start by apologising to everybody for everything. <laughs> For everything he has said, everything he's now saying, and for everything he will say. <laughs> Just get that out of the way. 